Good morning, church. If you've looked through your bulletin, you know that we're celebrating Christmas today. So Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> From Psalms 33, verse 6, we hear, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning as we listen to the prelude. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Can one night make such a difference? Can one star outshine all others? Can one baby change a world? Yes, a thousand times yes. On that first Christmas night, so one birth changed the world. Yes, Hope sp springs afresh. For forgiveness sets loose new possibilities. Can one night make such a difference? Yes, a times, yes. Please join me in the unison prayer. Holy God, take us into that night long ago, and in our imaginations, let us marvel at the holy child. Worship on bended knee and sing with the angels. Let us behold the tender care of Mary in the watchful care of Joseph. Let us be blessed by the gaze of the Christ child. Loving God, when we leave this place, may we leave like the shepherds, singing and praising God, for Christ is born again and again, born to set us free, born to give us hope, born to change the world. Let it happen again. Amen. Please join me in our opening um, carols.
The first gospel lesson today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should take place, should be taken over of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. As the children come forward this morning, we'll be singing, He is Born. summer? How come we're having Christmas carols today? It's Christmas in July. Is it really Christmas in July? Sure it is. What do you do at Christmas? We sing. What else do we do at Christmas? We praise God. What else do we do at Christmas? We praise God in a special way. What do we do at Christmas? We have a giant feast. Yeah, I can't promise you that. Um, But what do we do? Christmas, we do some things we never do any other time. We have stuff out we never have out any other time. Christmas decorations. And part of those Christmas decorations are? Angels. Who else? Three kings. Who else? Come on, boys. You should be able to come up with one. Ah, uh, yeah, but I don't want to talk about the animals, just the people. What? Just the people. Tristan, who do we have? You've played one here. Who takes care of the sheep? The shepherd. The shepherd. Jesus. Thank you. And who's with Jesus? Mary and, and the baby. And? Mary and Joseph. Thank you. Poor Joe gets left out all the time. So I want to read just two verses of scripture, I think. A couple of verses, okay? Now, see in the front row there are those white things? Okay. I will break it up as we go. Rachel read through verse 5, so I'm starting at verse 6. Well, I'm going to read one verse ahead, one verse behind. Mary went with Joseph, his, his, his bread, Mary went with, hmm, Joseph went with Mary, his wife-to-be, and they were expecting a child. So, I need Amelia. Go find who's going to go in the nativity first. We just read about them, Mary and Joseph. Go find them. Good girl, bring them up. Put them up on the altar. Make a nativity scene for us. You know what that is. Oh, put him in the middle. Let's give them headlines today. Okay, don't sit down. While she was still there, she... While she was there, her time came, and she gave birth to a firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest rooms available. So who are you going to go get now? Joseph's already there. 
she had the baby. Who are you going to go get? There you go. Go get the baby. And then you're done. Okay. All right. Now, now we're going to keep going. Listen, because you're going to have to figure out who comes next. And there were shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. You're going to get the shepherds? Good girl. Put the shepherds in. Okay, it was a private joke. <laughs> and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were afraid. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy for all people. You want to go get the angel? You want to go help her, Daxton? Okay, you go help her. Oops, or maybe not. Okay, let him carry it up the steps and you can put it. Oh, he's already done. Okay. Now put that one behind Mary and Joseph so she's overlooking everybody because she's big. I wouldn't say a giant, J.R., but she's big. Okay, now we have one group left. And, of course, they're not in the original story, so let me find them for you. <clears throat> and when they came over the place, they opened their treasures. There you go. Good boy. Put them up there. And they presented to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, okay, that's fine. Now, so now we have the whole Christmas story, right? Okay, so what else do we have at Christmas, though? We have a manger, we have Mary Joseph, gifts. gifts. Oh, look at that. Do you think there might be gifts? Okay. Everybody out there gets a gift. Everybody. Go. I don't know. Do you think you get a gift? Don't forget the balcony. Okay. You'll need more, so come back. Go. Give them out to somebody. Anybody and everybody. I have plenty. All gone. Here. I have to give you more. He doesn't have as big a hands as you. <laughs> and everybody doesn't have this much fun at church, trust me. Yeah, Daxton, come on up here and give one to Aaron. And give one to Rachel behind me. Over at the piano. He's over there on us, trust me. You just can't see him. <laughs> Do you still need more? Goodness gracious. Did you give Rachel one? Right over here. Does everybody have one? If you don't, will you put your hand up? We may have missed some. <gasps> Is he okay? <laughs> okay, and then I think you should keep one. Whatever one you want. 
I know. Pick one. Which one you want? I can't answer that question. Jeez. Do you want one of the snowmen instead? Okay. I know, I'm getting you one. Okay, guys, okay, guys, guys, guys. Okay, I've lost them. <laughs> Which one do you want? Which wrapping? Okay. Everybody in the March, do you have one? Everybody up there has one? I'm telling you, not everybody has this much fun at church. Don't be sitting there thinking she's nuts. <laughs> church should be fun. I know, we don't gifts that get gifts every day. Where's JR? You have one, you have one, you have one. JR, did we lose you? No. Okay, do you want snowflakes or do you want snowman? Okay. Oh, sorry. I was close. Okay, so getting back to Christmas. Now we have our nativity up and we all have gifts. So let's talk a little bit. Why do we have Christmas? To learn about God. Right, to celebrate what God did for us. Before Jesus could die on the cross, what did God have to do? Jesus, Jesus right. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, he had to make the earth, and what did he give us at Christmas time? No. No, at Christmas time. At Christmas time. Amelia, who did you put on the altar? Um, Mary, Joseph, and who? Jesus. Daxton, honey, you got to sit down. There you go. Okay? All right, thanks. Now, he gave us Jesus. So we celebrate Jesus, and instead, it's Jesus' birthday, but instead of Jesus getting the gifts, who gets the gifts? Jesus. We do, because God loved us that much. And see, that's what I want you to think about during Christmas, during Christmas in July. I want you to think about how much God loved us, all right? Now, Mrs. Cook is taking you downstairs today, and instead of me trying to give these out, I'm going to send them downstairs with her, but I'll show you what they are, because I think they're pretty cool. No, you might not. Because, I mean, you're all grown up and sophisticated and everything. You think so. What do you put this on? It's a door hanger. And you're going to make your own nativity set on it. That's kind of neat. Kind of, Mamelia? Kind of? Okay. So... We're going to say a prayer, and this is what I want you to do. At Christmas time, everybody's nice to one another. Yeah. And we're being extra good because we want extra what? Present. Say no. <laughs> but I want you to remember that we have to be nice to each other all the time. Because that's what God would want, right? Even your siblings, sweetheart. Even those sisters, which are the sweetest sisters in the world. No. <laughs> You're teasing me. I know you are. All right, let's pray. I love watching these kids develop their personalities, don't you? I remember when that one over there on the end, his parents would drag him up there and they'd have to sit in the first pew. You're not going to have that problem with Daxton. But I remember when you were so shy, Jenna, you'd never talk. Yeah. I just love watching you all grow up. Just don't grow up too fast, okay? 
I know you are. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, I do thank you for each and every one of these kids. And I thank you, dear God, for their families that know it's important for them to be here. And thank you, dear God, for helping each of them to be individual personalities. And be with them, dear God. Keep them safe. Amen. Okay, you may take these down and give them to Mrs. Cook. And Julie, if they want more than one, just let them have them because I don't need them. The second gospel today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And then there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that caused great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of, of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory, to, glory be to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to them, those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had just seen, which had been just as they were told. Did anyone have a doctor's checkup lately? I know Matt did. Doug, didn't you have one? Anybody else? Bev had one. Anybody else? There you go. We've got three back there, the, both Tars and Sue and Dean. Was it for anything specific or it was like your six-month checkup? See, I go to the doctors twice a year, every six months to get my script. And that's really the only reason I go, to get my scripts. Well, when we go to the doctor, they check lots of things. Our blood pressure, our heart rate, our cholesterol. You know, they take all those vials of blood. And then they check something called AC1. Is that right? Did I get the AC1 right? I sometimes mix my letters up. What is it? A1C. Close enough. And they do your blood count, and then they make you get on that dreaded thing called a scale. I think that's probably inhumane. And then they go through all that with you, and they tell you, quit doing this and quit doing this, and you got to eat different, and you got to get exercise. You know, you know the whole story, right? We've all heard that story. And then you don't see them again for another six months. And maybe... You probably go out of there, and maybe for the first day or two you think, okay, I'm really going to make a change, you know, yeah. Well, by the end of the first week, you're back to ice cream at night and, you know, whatever. Well, we're going to do a six-month checkup today, but not of our physical health. There's no scale involved at all. But it's like, where are we at spiritually? Okay, so you got a gift, right? Who opened it already? I knew. Stand up if you opened your gift already. Stand up right now. See, I knew I could count on people to do that. I absolutely knew it. Good, I'm glad you opened them. Now, everybody open them. But there's one deal. You got to take your garbage home with you. Don't be leaving garbage for me to pick up or the janitor. 
I knew there'd be people that opened them. I am so proud of you, because that would have been me. Except I grew up being told, never open your gift in front of people. So if you bring me something, I'll usually say to you, may I open it? And that's why, because Mama said you didn't do that. So, All right, so we all have them open. Now, are they all the same? I loved it when um, Allison asked me that. Well, kind of the same, but not the same. Did you both get the same one? Well, we'll trade you one, honey. It's okay. All right, so, but they all are words, correct? And these are words of Christmas. And so instead of checking our cholesterol and our blood pressure and our weight, we're going to check these and see where we're at. Because, you know, at Christmas, things are different. We're, uh, after we get rid of the, the hecticness, we're more prone to be generous and, and caring and, and giving to people. I mean, remember, we took care of those six families, and we still do that. So that we didn't just do for Christmas. But, you know, there's all kinds of opportunities to share with people less, ne or less um, wealthy or less um, affluent than us at Christmas. Well, what, do we just think they only eat at Christmas? Do we just think they only need help at Christmas? So these words are words that we, as believers and celebrators of the real Christmas, need to check and see how our levels are. So someone give me one of the words, because I don't have anything up here. You give me a word. Faith. All right. At Christmas time, it's a... It's a, it's a fill up of our faith because we have faith that God so loved the world that he wasn't going to let it perish. And Hebrews tells us that faith is hoping for things that you cannot see. Now, none of us have ever seen baby Jesus. None of us have seen the resurrected Christ. But we have faith that that's who holds our future. We have faith in God's love. We have faith that we will someday be reunited with the infant Jesus who grew into the resurrected Savior. So faith is something we need to always know that we have a lot of. And so what I'm going to ask you to do in your mind, I'm not going to ask you to do it physically, unless you want to, just kind of scale, give yourself a number between one and five. How's your faith these days? You know, this has been a horrendous six months. Does anybody disagree? Well, in the next six, maybe just as horrendous, nobody knows. But we've had our, our, our share of hardships. But we've had our share of blessings, too. And you see, faith helps us to see the blessings and not dwell on the hardships. So kind of give yourselves a little number there, one to five, how you do in the faith department. So what's my next word? Hope. The hopes and dreams of all the, of all the years are seen in the little town of Bethlehem tonight. Hope. We know it's related to faith because Paul tells us that. Hope is what gets us up in the morning. Hope is what brings us here. We hope that we'll see our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we hope that we'll feel God's presence. Hope is what keeps us going. And Christmas reminds us of that. As we watch our little ones, hope that they're going to get all the things they ask for under that tree, even though they know that they haven't been the little angels that they've been telling people they are but they still have hope. Hope is eternal. My hope is built in nothing less than Jesus Christ. 
That's the hope that Christmas gives to us, and it's reinforced at Easter. And yet sometimes our hope gives way to doubt, gives way to despair and discouragement. And so as we sing these Christmas carols today, so many of them use these words that our hopes and dreams need to be reborn in us. We need to have that hope that we had when we were five years old on Christmas Eve when we went to bed but couldn't sleep and just laid there and waited and waited and waited to see what would happen. Okay, well, I'm 67 years old. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting to see my hope fulfilled in Christ my Savior. So how are you doing hope-wise? Because you need to have that. My next word's going to be what? Love. Is that what you said? Love. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. Remember, God created the world, and it's his, and he loves it very much. And God created humankind in his very own image. And he said, here, I have this wonderful garden for you. Go, live, enjoy, prosper, multiply. And then Eve met the serpent. And somehow the serpent's golden tongue was stronger than God's love. But God's love didn't disappear. God was angry enough to destroy the world once, but said he'd never do that again by flood. And then he said, you know what, I'm not going to destroy the world. I'm going to give the world another chance. And so Jesus was born. Sweet little Mary, who was probably 13 years old. How old are you, Rachel? She's 14, you're safe. <laughs> she was made pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And a Christ child was born, an innocent little baby who needed to be taken care of, just like every baby. Because that made humankind understand love in a whole new way. And so love embraces and just embodies Christmas. So how is our love? Who are we taking care of? Are we taking care of our children and our vulnerable elderly people? Because that's what it's about, loving each other. So how are we doing love-wise? I loved it when she said, even our siblings. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes... Eh, we, we, we really have a hard time loving some people. And yet, we're Christians. We're people of God. We have never seen a person that wasn't made in God's image. Now, that doesn't mean they stayed and grew in God's image. But they're still made in the image of God. And when we look at them, we need to see that image of God, even when it's hard. Okay, I've got three more words. Noel. Do you know what Noel means? Well, I had to look it up. It's a French word, which doesn't surprise me. And what it means is Christmas. Actually Christmas. So if you got Noel, you got like all five words into one. Because when you look at the Noel, you'll think of Christmas and what God gave you, and how you should be celebrating it each and every day. My next word should be peace. Peace. You know, we only think of peace as an absence of conflict. And that's not at all the peace that God gave us at Christmas. Because the peace God gave us at Christmas is that stillness within. That stillness that says, 
The world can be crashing, but I'm okay because Jesus holds me in the palm of his hand. And on Christmas Eve, when we gather here at the very end of the service and we turn all the lights out, we sing that lullaby to the baby. And we say, sleep in heavenly peace. That's the peace that you need to have in your life. Because when you have peace, the person beside you who is a basket case because of everything that's going on is going to look at you and wonder, what does he or she have that I don't? We need to practice having that peace. We need to find the quiet place. And we need to just spend time in the presence of God. If you go camping, I can imagine it's at nighttime when you can hear all the night critters. And as long as they keep you their distance, that's a good thing. And you have the fire and you have the sky without all the lights to bother it, bother seeing it, and you can have peace. I sit out on the back porch. Gracie and I find peace there most times because she can be out doing whatever it is dogs do in yards and I can just sit there and look at what stars I can see and I can be surrounded and filled with that peace. So how are our peace levels today? So we've done love, we've done hope, we've done faith. We have one more, I think. Joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and you may have it abundantly, that you might be filled with joy. Remember Christmas morning, and for those of you that, that have little ones, look, remember the, the, the giddiness and the smiles and the twinkle in their eyes when they're opening those gifts. They are just joyful. They can't be contained. They're squirming and they're giggling and they just can't stop it. When was the last time that you got to giggling that you just couldn't stop? Do you even remember? Good. If you remember, Darlene, that's good. If you can't remember, that's bad because that means you need a whole fill-up of joy. I bet up there in the balcony, I bet the two Davids has had times this week when they just started to giggle and giggle and giggle because they were all on vacation together. And then there were times they were not on the beach to find that peace. But, you know, we need those times when we're just so filled. We can't sit still. Shirley, honey, I know you always have that. That's okay. But we have to have the times where we just can't be contained. We're just so excited and we're overflowing with happiness. Not because of anything in particular, but just because we feel so content and so blessed. And so how are we doing joy-wise? So we've got love, we've got peace. We've got hope, we've got faith, we've got joy. And they all bring us to Noel. They all come together in Christmas. Maybe we need to have Christmas in July every year so that we stop and think about where have we come in six months? Do we still have any of that joy, that peace, that faith, that hope, that love that was so abundant the last week in December? Or when we packed the nativity away, did we pack it away too? Have we just left the world and all of the circumstances just drag us down to where we don't even remember the last time we just had a belly giggle? You know, there's always the joke, two certain people shouldn't sit together in church because they start giggling. I think you should sit together in church. I think our church needs to be more joyful all church, I don't mean us in particular, but we shouldn't come in here with long drawn faces. We're coming to meet Jesus, even if it's only for an hour. I know, an hour and 15 minutes, but still, we need to be filled with that so that when we go back out there to do battle for another week, and it is battle, 
we know that our levels are right where they need to be. And we're going to share a little Christmas with somebody this week. So what did your final score look like? You know? You leave the doctor and he says, okay, I'll see you in six months and I want to see 10 pounds off and I want to see this and I want to see that. And I mean, I go to the car and go, uh-huh. Well, you know, I want to weigh 125 pounds, but the chances of that happening are pretty slim. So your ch chances of what you want are pretty slim too. But you know, in six months, this sanctuary will be beautiful again with all kinds of Christmas things. And we'll have a, lot, a bigger nativity, and you'll be able to see the figures. And we'll sing Christmas songs all that month. And then, you know, we'll have to have the checkup with the great physician. And how will our numbers be for that great physician? So I don't know what your numbers are today. I know what mine are. And I know there are places I need to improve. And this one I'm going to take seriously. So that in six months when I'm singing Silent Night, Sleep in Heavenly Peace, I know that I've spent six months sharing that love and sharing that joy and sharing that peace and hope and faith. And that I've kept Noel Christmas alive in my spirit so that I am pleasing to the great physician, and so I can truly celebrate. He is born because he's lived in my heart for the six months checkup. I love it. Joys and concerns, first of all, we did not try to tie-dye your bulletins today. Um, the, new, the new copier is ordered. It should be here by the end of the month. So we will just, whatever we get for the next couple of weeks is what we get. <laughs> so come and be surprised. <laughs> we are doing the best we can. So, joys and concerns. I'm going to tell you what. I think the biggest joy for me is seeing Steve Brown sitting in the pew today. I don't know if you know how much of a scare you gave people, but he had kind of a tough beginning of the week. Um, so it's a joy to see you here. I know that you've got a ways to go, but the medicine seems to be working, and so we'll keep praying. But that's my first joy. Um, Dan has a doctor's appointment, or he has an echocardiogram tomorrow. So we're thankful that he's taken care of that. Kathy's dad is much improved, so that's good. I'm not, I'm sorry. Ka try Carrie. Carrie's dad. Well, it's Kathy's dad, too. Matt, you have an MRI this week? Yes. A and Matt's, Matt's dealing with a, a painful knee, and those of us that have been there know how that is. So keep Matt in your prayers that the MRI shows what can be done to fix the problem. Um, we're thankful Deb's with us again today, and she came to the women's group, and, and, you know, God's getting her through each day, but she needs your prayers also. Jerry was at the doctor this week, as you know, and they've decided they do need to do a procedure on his heart, so once that is determined, then we'll get that out there as a prayer concern, but um, Jerry said to me today, it's in God's hands, and there's no better place that it could be. Uh, Tara John who's Judy and Tom Bruner's daughter, is not doing well. She's battling cancer for the sixth time. She is out in Allegheny General Hospital. She had fluid drained out of her stomach. And so um, they're trying to, to kind of piece together what's going on. Please keep Tara and her family in your prayer. She's got two boys. I mean, they're older, but what, 21 and maybe 18 and 20. And she's got a husband, and she's got a mom and dad who love her very much, and a sister who got married yesterday, and she couldn't beat it.
But Tara's a fighter, and if you read her posts, she always finds a way to be positive. But please keep Tara in your prayers that God knows what's best and that God's plan is, is just fulfilled. Um, do you have, I think I've covered everything, do you have other joys or concerns this day? Sue. James. And Matt has a friend, Bob, who is going to have surgery at um, Hopkins, John Hopkins for colon cancer. Other joys or concerns. Lindsay. Absolutely. Other joys or concerns. Dana. Right. We will continue to pray for you, but it's good to have you here today. Other joys or concerns. Uh, Pam. Oh. Okay, so um, Pam's cousin Tiffany's back in another rehab. All right, we'll keep her in our prayers. Other joys or concerns, Kathy. Little children have a much better understanding of things than we think they do, but that was a blessing for you. And Becca and Brecken's right. He, they are together again. Other joys or concerns? Shirley. Um, Judy. Praise God for that. Just don't let them overdo it too much. And her name? Tammy. Any other joys or concerns? Karen. Less. Absolutely. Any other joys, concerns, or words of testimony today? Dr. Gretz. Carol. Any others? Feel like singing some more Christmas songs? Well, we're going to. <laughs>
Almighty and gracious God, we do thank you this day for the joy of Christmas and the love and the peace and the hope. And we ask that our faith in all would be stronger as we remember the wonderful gift given. And gracious God, we thank you for the lives that you've touched here. We thank you, dear God, that Steve's prognosis and diagnosis was much better than it could have been. We give you thanks he's able to be with us. We give you thanks Bob's able to go back to work and they finally found the source of his problem, dear God. We give you thanks that Kathy's dad is reunited with Louise. And we give you thanks for Brecken, dear God, and his testimony as a tiny child. And gracious God, we give you thanks for those who hadn't been able to be with us to be back and pray that you will keep them safe. And we're thankful that Rebecca was well enough to be with us today, but we want to keep her in our prayers also. For dear God, we are also a very needy people. For Dan and for Matt who have tests this week, we just pray that doctors will find sources of problems. We pray that you'll continue to be with Patty as she recovers from eye surgery, dear God. We pray, Lord, that you will be with Tara and with Tom and with Judy. Dear God, they're all in the palm of your hand and they all love you. And so, Lord, we just give them over to you so that your will might be done and that whatever you have planned, you will give them the grace and the peace to live through that plan. And Lord, for Carol, who begins a fight with, with breast cancer, and for James, and for Bob, dear God, who faces a cancer operation, just be with each and every one of them. Just be in the operating rooms and doctor's appointments. And we pray that you would be with Tammy as she has to go through a new kind of treatment and just keep her strong. And Lord, be with Les and help this new doctor find solutions. And with Katie as she waits these final days, until she receives this new blessing and new bundle of joy from heaven. And for Tiffany, Lord, who's kind of had a step backwards, but be with her and help this center to be able to, to help her grow strong. And be with Jerry as he waits for his appointment and then for surgery. And for all the unspoken requests, dear God, take them off, out of our hearts and off of our hearts and give them to you. And Lord, we just pray for each other, whatever the needs may be. We pray, dear God, for our church and the, the United Methodist Church, dear God, and just for the community of faith in this world that we might be a stronger voice. And we pray for our leaders and we pray for our country, dear God. We ask all this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, who taught us when we pray that we should say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Announcements you'll find... Um, they're almost all having to do with Bible school. Next Sunday, we do have the recital here at 2. Um, I hope some of you are going to come and be blessed by those students. It's always encouraging for students to have an audience. Um, after church, any able-bodied man or woman, I get in trouble if I don't say that, um, we bring Christmas trees down from the youth room down right here. Is this good? And then the forest people are coming in to make the forest. That's out of my pay, pay scale, so I don't do that. But if any of you can help bring trees down. There's a few trees up there, right, Jason? Mm -hmm. um, picnic in the park on the 8th. That's our church service. Starts at 10. Sign-up sheet is in the back today. Please do that. You don't have to bring anything but yourself and a chair. All the food's going to be there. You don't have to bring anything. So just come for a good time and pray for good weather. And Tiffany has an announcement.
Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who came out on Tuesday to help with our VBS props and decorations. We were able to get this awesome train tunnel built. I learned a new skill. I learned how to paint paper to make it look like a rock, and I'll carry that with me forever. And it's still standing, so that's a huge blessing, too. <laughs> Um, and then Tuesday evening, we made lots of props, and so many of you came out and made the most beautiful trees. I don't know what I'm going to do with them after this is over. I'll take them home and put them in my house. They're just so pretty. Wait till you guys see them. So just thank you to all of you who did that, because um, without you, we can't get these things done, you know, and it's for our kids. Um, I also wanted to thank everyone who volunteered to help with VBS the week of VBS. I can't tell you how thankful I am for each and every single one of you. You are an answer to my prayers. You can ask Pastor Kathy. Volunteers and children's signups were the biggest concerns for me, and both of those things have been answered, and I thank God for that. And I've never shared a testimony before, but I think this might qualify as one. Um, when I was praying for volunteers, I just hoped that we had enough to cover all of the positions that we needed. And the other day I was making the schedule and assigning you know, responsibilities to the people that said they could help. And we have exactly the right amount of people for each position. So that's God doing that and touching your hearts and I'm just so thankful for that. With that said, if you would still like to help, we will never turn you away. We can always use extra hands. It will make things easier for the people here if we have more help, so please you know, feel free to still, to still come. Um, lastly, I just wanted to thank everyone who gave from the Giving Tree. All of those supplies, donations, the monetary donations have gone so far. And these kids that come, we have almost 40 kids signed up, um, are going to be so excited and, and blessed by everything that you guys have given. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And the very last thing, if you're a crew leader, that means that you're taking the little groups of kids around on VBS week. If you could stay after, I just wanted to share a couple things with you. It'll take me two minutes. And in case you don't know if you're a crew leader, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> That's Judy, Shirley, Karen, um, Christy, Haley, Carrie, uh, Marge, and Pastor Kathy. So that's it. Thank you, guys. Let's continue worshiping God with our tithes and our offerings.
Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for all your good and perfect gifts, most especially your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Accept these, our gifts, imperfect, yet gifts to show our love and our devotion to be of service to you. Amen. Since we're celebrating Christ's birth this, uh, the, today, um, I've been hearing little niggles throughout the congregation of birthdays that we have in the month of July, and I think we have a good many of them again. So how, where are our July babies? Where are July birthdays? Can we just say a big happy birthday to everyone for uh, July, please? Happy birthday. <laughs> Let us join in our closing hymns. the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. May you go forth with Christmas in your heart, love and joy and peace and hope on your lips and lived in your life. Amen. <laughs>